What is up YouTube and welcome to another super exciting video on secret management. This is the future. So if you guys are new to the series, please check out the links down below. I have uh, made a getting started guide on Vault on Kubernetes on basically um, spinning up a, a vault, how to configure it, all the basic concepts, the algorithm around the encryption key and how all of that works. I've also created a video on end to end encryption for TLS to make sure our vault connectivity inside our cluster is fully encrypted. And then I've also made a video on injecting basic or static secrets from Vault um, automatically into our application. So in this video, we're going to solve a very common problem that I'm sure most of you have. You have a database and you have an application. How do we get Vault to automatically create users in our database and then assign the password and inject the password into the application automatically without the application even being aware it's being done and also without the database being aware. So we can also control or get Vault to control the credential fully end to end, the whole life cycle of the credential. So if an application dies, Vault will revoke the, the username and password. We can also put a TTL on the credentials. So if the credential expires, Vault will update, generate a new credential and inject it into our application without the application even um, knowing. So in this example, I have a Postgres DB running in the cloud. You can have that Postgres DB running in a cluster or anywhere. I'm just using Postgres as this example. And then in the future, we'll take a look at other databases and other examples. So without further ado, let's go. So just so you guys know, everything in this video is on GitHub. It's on the Docker development YouTube series in the HashiCorp vault folder. You will see a readme guide. So everything I'm doing in this video is in this guide. You can follow along as well. Now, in this example, we're going to need a Kubernetes 1.17 cluster because we need the, the admission um, controllers enabled by default. So I'm going to use Kind to provision a cluster. If you haven't checked out the um, video on Kind, check the link down below. I'll include a video there um, where I basically create Kubernetes cluster within Docker in like a few seconds. And you can run multiple versions, different versions of Kubernetes, especially if you want to throw away the cluster um, afterwards. So once I have a kind cluster up and running, I'm going to go ahead and create a new namespace called Vault Example. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my HashiCorp Vault inside of that namespace and we can just see the Vault is coming up and ready. If you haven't seen the video on Vault, check the link down below. Um, I go through all the concepts of how Vault um, creates storage, its configuration, the algorithm and everything you need to get up and running. Now that we have a new vault up and running, I'm going to go ahead and um, execute a command in the vault, which is vault operator init. That'll initialize the vault for the first time, give me all the unsealed keys and the root token. So I want to go ahead and save that somewhere. And then what I want to do is go, go ahead and unseal the vault. So I'm going to run vault operator and I want to pass an unseal and I'm going to use the keys to do this. And I have to do this three times to get the vault Unlock. And after the vault has been unsealed, if we do a get pods, we'll see our readiness probe will pass and our vault is now ready to be used. So let's firstly take a look at our use case. We have a Postgres database up and running, and then we have a Kubernetes cluster with a pod running. Now this is, can be a legacy PHP app, can be any kind of a um, application that needs to talk to the database. So what we need to do, the first thing is we need to run this application as a service account on Kubernetes. This will allow us to um, authenticate and authorize and have some kind of identity for this application. So our vault will then be able to authenticate um, with uh, Kubernetes to basically verify that this pod, pod is allowed access to the secret. So the first thing we're going to need to do next is enable the um, the Kubernetes auth inside of Vault to allow Vault to authenticate with Kubernetes. Once we have that in place, we can then apply a policy for the pod. So we can use the, the policy to say this service account has access to that Postgres database and then automatically go and fetch and create a credential um, which will be created in that database automatically for us and then inject it to the pod as a secret. And the, the cool thing is that pod will then run with that secret and if the pod dies, we'll go back and clean it up automatically. 
So to enable this authentication mechanism to allow Vault to talk to the Kubernetes API, we're going to go ahead and run this command inside of our Vault called Vault Auth Enable Kubernetes. Once we have this enabled, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into our Vault and we're going to write a config and the config will allow us um, to authenticate with, with Kubernetes. So we're going to create a Vault Write Auth Kubernetes config. So this is a config file uh, within our Vault and what we do is we pass a token which is the um, Kubernetes service account that the vault runs as and we point it to where the Kubernetes API is and we also pass it the CA certificate. Once we have this in place our vault can now talk to Kubernetes API. Now I have a SQL database in Postgres right here in the cloud and part of the operational um, pain of this in terms of secrets is I have to create service accounts or user accounts for applications to connect. So here I have a Postgres user, it's obviously the root user and the admin super user. Now how do we get Vault to automatically create and provision users for us? So that's the first step. Okay, so for this to work, we actually have to tell Vault about our database and we have to authorize Vault to act on our behalf. Now for this, you probably won't use your master password, but you could create a user account with permissions to basically delegate the creation of users user accounts on your behalf. So to do that, we're going to log into Vault and we're going to give it our root password. So now we're in Vault and what we're going to need to do is enable the database engine. So I'm going to say Vault Secrets Enable Database and this will allow us now to configure our database credential creation. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to get a terminal into our Vault and now I want to write a Postgres database uh, configuration. This will basically tell Vault about our database and now you can use a specific user account that you want to use to um, act on your behalf. So in this example, I'm just going to use my um, my default one. So I'm saying vault write and I'm creating a database config for my Postgres. So this is the name of my database called Postgres DB. Um, this is the plugin name we want to use. Allowed roles, is, you can define a role. I'm just calling it SQL role. And then here is my connection URL format that connects to my Postgres. So I have a default database in there called Postgres DB. I'm just turning SSL um, off for now for this database. Um, that's the URL and the port of my database and then the username and password. So we go ahead now and we tell Postgres about our database with this configuration. The next step what we have to do is we have to define a role here. So we're going to say vault write and we create our SQL role. What we also tell um, vault is how to create these users. So we put in the SQL statement of basically defining the type of um, user we want to create. Now in mine, I'm just saying create a role with the name and the password and I'm putting an expiration on it with a default expiration of one hour and then I'm granting select on all tables. So you can kind of um, make this a little bit more granular just depending on your needs. So I'm going to go ahead and create that and that now creates a roles called SQL role. So you can basically define multiple different roles. And then what we're going to do is we're going to map the roles to a Kubernetes service account. So any kind of microservice app job workload that runs in our cluster that is part of that service account list will automatically be able to use this feature. All right, so now we've told Vault about our database and we've delegated the user creation to Vault itself. So we've eliminated the need for humans to create passwords and pass them insecurely between people and applications. So now that we've got Vault automatically creating a, a username and password for us, how do we get this to automatically inject into our application? Now in Vault, everything is controlled with a policy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a policy and bind it to this role that we've created. And then we can map Kubernetes service accounts to this policy and we can start up example applications and they should automatically get the credentials injected. So what we want to go ahead and do now is jump back into our vault and log in if you're not logged in and we're going to create a policy. So I create this file called Postgres app policy, which is a vault policy file, and I give it access to a credential path. Now everything in vault is kind of like a uh, folder structure and you can create your own structure. We've enabled the database engine, so it will fall under database. And then we have creds, which is the credential. And this is our SQL role that we created earlier. So anything that kind of falls under this policy will get read access. So they'll be able to create credentials on the fly. So we want to go ahead and create that policy file. And then the next next step we're going to do is we're going to say vault policy write and we're going to write that file into vault and we're going to call this policy postgres app 
policy. So I go ahead and apply that. And now that I have created a policy, the last bit that we want to do is kind of bind that policy to a service account. So because we have a, we're going to have a service account for our pod, and um, we want to go ahead and say vault right, and it'll be a Kubernetes auth with a with this role. So we created the SQL role. You can give it any name. We bind our service account. Um, I have a service account called Dynamic Postgres. I'll show you guys in a second. That's going to be the service account that runs our pod, our, our basically our PHP application. And it's going to run in Vault Example namespace. So you have to tell it which namespace to look into. And then we're going to apply our policy. So this is our policy that we created earlier. And we're going to give it a TTL of one hour. Now, the moment of truth to test this we can run a command called vault read and we can read that that role and as soon as we do that we can see that vault has gone and created a, um, a user account so it created this user and this is the password so if we jump back to our postgres db and we do this command again we can see a, a new user has appeared and this user will only um, live until this time which is an hour from now an hour from now this credential will expire and vault will come in and delete that so this is just a, a normal application, can be a PHP app, legacy app, uh, can be any kind of a microservice that you're running. I'm just calling this one um, dynamic Postgres is the name of it, just because this is dynamically, this is part of the example, giving it an app label. I'm running a service account. So this is the key part. We run a service, we create a service account called dynamic Postgres, and we run this deployment or this pod as that service account. So now Kubernetes will know that this service account has access, will automatically um, will be able to authorize through the Kubernetes API and we'll be able to get our secret. And the special part or the magic all lives in this annotation. Everything else is standard Kubernetes syntax. The annotation is what tells Vault or the injector um, to inject. So we say agent inject is true. We tell it to skip verify um, TLS because we're running self-signed certificates in this example. And then here we say, um, agent inject secret and this is the the secret name we say sql role and this is the full secret name in vault which is database cred sql role and then we pass in a template to use now we also specify here this the the, the secret that we want to um, apply for in this template so you can have multiple secrets with multiple templates if you want to if you're if your application is expecting multiple secrets from the vault and here we're using a normal go template syntax so we say with this database cred sql role generate me this JSON file um, with DB connection. And then this is going to be the connection string that it'll generate. This allows you to kind of take a credential, like a username and a password, and then turn it into something that the application expects, like a config file or some kind of a, um, formatted a credential file. And then finally, last but not least, we have the role, which is our SQL role. This is the role that we want to use um, in order for the vault to do all the authentication mechanism and give us access to the secret that we need. Now for um, secret injection to work, we also have to deploy the injector. The injector is key because that's kind of the service that injects the secret um, into our pod. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy that injector and then we can do a kubectl get pods and we can see our injector is now running. So the injector basically talks to the vault on the pod's behalf. It also injects, it basically takes in the role of injecting the secret um, and does all the authentication for us. So now with everything ready, we have a vault up and running. The vault has been um, configured to talk and verify with Kubernetes about service accounts that run. Um, we also have a policy that binds to a role, which binds to a service account. So now vault has the ability to, to talk to our Postgres DB. It's a, it has the ability to generate credentials. So now what we're going to do is the moment of truth. We're going to go ahead and apply an example application. So we want to go ahead and run our example app. This is our deployment file for our application workload that's going to be expecting a secret to be dynamically created and injected. And if we do kubectl get pods, we can see our application has started up and let's go inside and see if our credential is there. So we do exec it bash run sh. Now we're inside and if we cat out vault secrets sql role, we can see our db connection string was automatically 
generated. We can also see that um, a new user was created and injected here with a password. And if we hop back into our Postgres DB and we look at the user accounts, we can see a new user account has come up. So now Vault will automatically manage these accounts on our behalf. We don't need a user to come and manage the accounts anymore. Um, we don't need users to create secrets. We basically don't have to insecurely pass secrets around people. And this all happens automatically behind the scenes. So that is as simple as it gets. Super secure, dynamic SQL credential creation and injection into your application with no humans involved whatsoever. And this is not just limited to Postgres SQL. This is, can be used for other SQL databases as well. I'm actually quite keen to jump into some of the cloud integrations. We can basically interact with different cloud provider storage. So let me know down in the comments what sort of integration you'd like to see and remember to like and subscribe and until next time peace